Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, welcome back to another Destiny video. And in today's video, given that we are a mere 18 days away, at least at the time of recording this video, from the Destiny 2 Worldwide Gameplay Reveal, I thought it was about time for a discussion. Joining me today are two very awesome people, both of whom I'm sure you are no doubt very familiar with, and if not, then you'll be very soon. And I figured we'd chat today about Destiny as a whole, Destiny 1, where it is right now, and some of the stuff we hope to see change going into the sequel, and of course, Destiny 2, our hopes and dreams, and stuff for the gameplay reveal, all that good stuff. So, joining me today, first up we have one of Destiny's lore masters, absolute legend, someone I've known for quite a while now, and that is Mr. My Name is Bife. How are you doing, sir? Doing very well, thanks for having me on the video, Alex. It's alright, it is a pleasure to have you here, and it's also going to be interesting to uh, chat some, uh, well, some some lore stuff. I appreciate my uh, my lore knowledge is not quite as in-depth as yours, but still going to be exciting stuff to talk about. And then in the red corner, I'm making this sound like a boxing match now, <laughs> we have someone that <laughs> you may well know him more so initially from The Division for his hyper-analytical approach to game coverage, but recently he's been broadening her, his horizons and has every intention to go big on Destiny 2. Also had a pretty big review out recently and that is skill up how are you doing buddy i'm very well man can i just say it was really good to hear the arix introduction live like <laughs> having heard the arix video introduction thousands of times from watching every one of your videos hearing that live was good fun I <laughs> well i'm glad i could provide that it is uh, it's quite an interesting yeah. thing to do like an intro like that on a on a podcast it's, it's, it's strange but um i've got to say like, like, don't stuff it up don't stuff yeah. it up yeah like, crap, crap. <laughs> i uh spoiler alert i actually wrote it down to make sure i didn't stuff it up <laughs> <laughs> there, yes, it right there, there it is there it is there it is you would you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it like, the amount of times I do my intro, I still mess it up. But anyway, um, I actually watched your just before this podcast. I was like, because I want to talk about it and other stuff anyway. I was like, I need to finish watching your review. I watched it a little bit late because I didn't have a chance the other day. But yeah, very, very impressive. 45 minutes. Thank but you. But if you guys are. Uh, but so good and very much on point with yes. every single note mentioned it's such a it's yeah. a great video check it out yeah yeah thank no i mean I, I, I it's definitely one of those things for like these types of games it's very hard for people to you know or just you know we, we find this a lot people don't typically review these kind of games well enough because you just need you need to invest time into it right yeah absolutely. and that's something that you know some games journalists just don't have but anyway uh we'll of course touch on that a little bit later but for the time being i think figure we start with destiny one we're going to kind of do a very quick retrospective because of course that in itself could be a video but we're going to try and just sort of like quickly go over where we're at right now because of course it is a game that we all love um but there's no denying it has been through its ups and downs and it's not perfect it is a great game a game we love and a game we cannot wait to sort of see what happens next but there are some things we definitely want to sort of see changed so starting off uh with where we exist right now um how do you guys feel bit of a broad question we'll start broad and then we'll start um narrowing down how do you guys feel where we are right now? Like, let's start off with uh, Bife. When, given the, you know, given where we obviously where we come from, you've been a player since the alpha. Right from the beginning, you've been with uh, with Destiny throughout the whole journey. I figure we're in a pretty good place right now. Um, but what are your kind of like thoughts now going into Destiny Two from where we stand? So I, I think there's really a couple ways that you can split this down. First of all, we need to talk about end game because that's mm -hmm. relevant to the player base right now. And in terms of end game, it's aside from maybe some Crucible stuff where they could maybe rebalance a few things. It's never been better, you know? We have yes. a great variety of raids that we can do. Almost every single endgame uh, activity rewards progressive loot, which means that players who do not have 400 light yet can still get it, mm -hmm. and can even get it with relative ease if they're solo players. And then on top of that, the uh, variety of loot and how useful it is has almost never been better, you know? The only time when loot has almost been more powerful than this is year one, with the legendary elemental primaries, and even then, you have mm. the exotic versions now. But even so, you know, you don't have the variety of stuff that you had in terms of exotics either, you know? Now we have everything from the Sleeper Simulant, to the Exotic Swords, to Outbreak Prime, to Yalahorn again. There's so many weapons, and the only one that we're missing realistically is Pocket Infinity. Just speaks to now the pure variety of stuff that players have, and that's a real strength because of how buttery smooth Destiny is. The more yes. weapons that you have that work within that formula or endgame, the better it is. And the other point, I think, for me in particular at least, that needs to be touched on is narratively speaking, you know? Mm. In three years, at Vanilla at very least, we had a very sort of nebulous story and we didn't really know much about what we were doing. And, you know, everybody has their respective gripes with various different expansions, but if you look at kind of the overarching thing that we've done over three years, it's not bad, you know? Like, no. by the end of um, Taken King, and as we're moving into Rise of Iron, 
There's a grimoire card called The Guardian, and it's basically uh, Saladin talking over with a few people about their recommendations for The Guardian that should handle the Siva Crisis. And obviously it's us that gets recommended, and mm. it recounts all of our achievements, you know. We killed Crota, we defeated the Heart of the Black Garden, we imprisoned and then killed Skolas, we dealt with the Taken King and the Taken War. You know, all of these are really important points within Destiny's plotline. And, you know, at the time being, they may not have felt like much, but as you start to go through the whole, you really start to understand now why we are legendary in terms of figures, you know? Mm. Like, to go back and, you know, talk about some of the most exciting characters that are kind of in the most immediate lore that a lot of players will know about in Destiny. Take a look at, like, the Thorn story, right? The Thorn story and the Last Word story is really only a thing because it revolves around, like, an evil character and a character that does good, but realistically, they don't have too many actions that impact the world. We do. So narratively speaking, we have a bit of weight to our story as a character, and that feels really good, you know? Yeah. Not just from the perspective of a, like, okay, after three years it feels like we actually have done something and we have a story, but also because setting up for the future, there's really good stuff that we can do moving forward into Destiny 2. So right now, really good place, you know? Yeah. It, it, Destiny has never been better is the way I summed yes. up in a single sentence. That's for sure, for sure. What about you, what about you Skillop? What are your, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I think, well, first of all, I think the good thing about appearing on a podcast like this is that you're really only speaking to, like, the faithful, and so you kind of don't have to put all the normal caveats on your, <laughs> like, comments that you otherwise would. Like, oh, well, the game has its problems, but yeah. like, you can kind of unreservedly say, you know what, this is a pretty fucking good game right now, mm. and uh, mm. that just feels yeah. nice to be able to say that. Like, obviously, I think the Crucible sucks right now, that's my personal view. Um, <laughs> like, it's just kind of way less fun than it was before, to be right, honest. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, 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 and like... Like, I, I get that it's obviously a more balanced experience, but when it comes to things like reliance on abilities and grenades and supers and, and the like, sidearms, icebreaker, side icebreaker yeah. that's that's the entirety of, of, of Crucible, right? Uh, and it's cool that, you know, like we don't have shotgun whores running around like we used to. And I certainly used to be one of them. But like, <laughs> it's just it's just not as fun to be in the Crucible. Um, and I think that is the one part of the game that I think has suffered the most uh, um, in the last little while. Whereas the rest of it, I think, is just in such a fantastic place. Yes. I mean, I have always been a... Um, I've always been a sort of rusted on Destiny player, but also at the same time quite casual. It's the kind of game where... Because I covered like the Division for a year, mm. Destiny was the game that I played on the side so being able to drop into the experience and and get something out of it really quickly for limited time invested has always been really important to me and it just feels like that is so where the game is right now because you know like obviously we've got the raids rotating through with age of triumph we know what those raids are most of the rest of the community knows what they are as well so they know how to do them except for like <laughs> um axis final boss which is an absolute nightmare i don't even want to talk about that um but like it just kind of feels like when you start playing the game you log on you play for two or three hours you get stuff done and you just kind of like yeah. enjoy yourself because there's so much content you know if you want to go and do a story mission if you want to go and do your nightfalls just grind out some whatever like it's there for you you know yeah. and i just feel that's a great place to be and i and i really feel like certainly having played like lots of world of warcraft in the past i definitely felt that the game got to that point eventually after enough content built up behind it where it was like well whenever you logged on there was something to do you know it wasn't like that at the start but it certainly got there and it's just, i think it's the same with destiny right where right now no matter what i'm doing if i just feel like playing an hour of destiny i can you know log in and have some fun and that's it you know so yeah. From that perspective, I love it. You know, I just feel so happy with where they arrived with the vast majority of the content they produce. So, um, mm. yeah, for me, it's 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 in a, it's in a great spot. Yeah, and I mean, I completely agree. I mean, the, the main thing to kind of obviously think about going forward as well is that now that we have this breadth of content at our fingertips, it's going to be important that Destiny 2 launches in a strong place because you suddenly, you know, if, if we mm. were then to suddenly to go from a position where we've got all this content that we can, we can do on a weekly basis to suddenly being back to a, like, there's only two things you can do per week. It's going to be a rather interesting thing but um on that's the actually topic, yeah that's actually one of my biggest fears um, yeah you know, and i don't and who knows what kind of world they built but i really am worried about that because i'm just looking at this vast library of experiences that we have available to us right now that we can just dip into whenever we please and then it's kind of mm. like you know the new game how could the new game be as large as this like i hope it is don't get me wrong i desperately yeah, hope it yeah. is but my sneaking suspicion is that it probably won't be, you know, it probably will be something smaller and more contained in the immediate and it will open up over time, don't get me wrong, but in the uh, in that first bit, I don't know, that's just sort of yeah. what my, uh, my mm. gut would tell me. 
it makes me really want to believe all the leaks and rumors, right? Because yes. the consistent point that's always been coming out of Shinobi 602 and um, Jason Trier over at Kotaku is that a lot of what they've been doing over the year between Taken King and Rise of Iron was really working on the dev tools. And this mm. wasn't necessarily a point that would immediately impact them, but it would mean that later down the line, they could much more easily deliver more content more quickly because they would understand and they would have better stuff to work with when they're making future content. And so I, I think I kind of agree when you talk about how the world size is probably going to be way smaller uh, than what Destiny is offering right now in Destiny 2 when it launches. But I'm really hopeful for those expansions, you know? I think that if the expansions turn out to be something like The Dark Below uh, and, yeah. you know, uh, House of Wolves when they launch for Destiny 2, needless to say, there will be riots. But yeah. the nice thing is I think that there's a real load of potential on them for so many different fronts, right? If, yes. if what we've been hearing from rumors is true, they'll have a ton of content. But again, it's also a thing of like, it's not just a really generic expansion type thing anymore, you know? It's not just like, okay, here's the Hive expansion, here's the Fallen expansion, here's, you know, the Taken expansion. Now it's a case of they're actually taking like a really important element of the story and saying, okay, this is the Osiris expansion, this is the Warmind expansion. Yeah, that's exciting that, stuff. Like, aside from anything else, that approach in itself is novel, not just because it means that you have tons of opportunities to introduce new elements to the world story-wise that can engage people and get people interested, but also there's opportunities for new enemies. So something very interesting that was brought up to me by, um, I think I might have actually been discussing this with Mylin the other day, was uh, how, what are enemies going to be like in the Rasputin expansion? You know, we mm. thought at first, like, um, it may not have been Mylin was having this discussion, I'm not sure, regardless, check him out, he's a good lore master. Um, yeah, we may have been discussing how it might have been like a fallen invasion thing with Rasputin, but at the same time, there's a lot of talk about how Rasputin has its own armies and its own forces, right? Yes. So that in itself is a really interesting way of segueing into, hey, here's a new enemy type you can face, like the robotic forces of Rasputin, where it's not just like warframes, but also these massive constructs that you face up against, you know? Like mm. you have the Vex that you fight against and they're unique and alien and time travel, but what about like Warmind robots that are covered yeah. in those interesting shapes and that architecture that you always associate with them, you know, like uh, the diamond and the really interesting polished steel that's mm. polygonal and everything. Yeah, that could be really, really interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, there's tons of potential in the future for that. Yeah. No, for sure. For sure. Alright, well, moving on from there, a couple of things I, I like, what I want to talk about, like, specifically in the, um, sort of, you know, the end of Destiny is, let's start off with exotics. Now, this one, very quickly, like, I, um, I feel like we got to a point now with exotics where, in my opinion, they don't really feel quite as exotic as I would like. Now, my, my kind of my justification behind that is that I look at something like World of Warcraft, and I feel like some of these weapons they are very, very rare to the point that you get them and you just feel amazing, right? And I feel like you look back to Year One, you look at everyone's reactions when they first got Yellowhorn, for example, right? And I feel mm -hmm. like there's a, I mean, obviously this this kind of came with the whole Three of Coins culture and whatnot, but. I feel like they got, we got to a point at the end of the game where I no longer really get excited when I get these new exotics, given their kind of availability and whatnot. Like, would you like to sort of, you know, go into Destiny 2 um, thinking, you know, having these weapons or having these, these gear pieces become a lot harder to acquire and as such, you know, having greater value as a result of it? Or do you think they're actually at a kind of relatively decent place? Let's start off a uh, skill up. I'll throw it to you first. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. I guess that's kind of um, that's a question that I've certainly considered as well in the division a lot because they also have exotic weapons, funnily mm. enough. Um, but I mean, I've always liked. I mean, I, I personally feel like the weapon design of have one weapon that is super strong and you don't want anything else is pretty bad for a shooter because it kind of means that every player is funneling towards that one experience, that one weapon, and everything else just kind of feels like a compromise. Like, yeah. when you didn't have a Galahorn in year one, you were a second-class citizen. <laughs> you could mm. not get into raids. And that was really cool if you were the guy with a Galahorn, but it was really shit if you were not, you know? Yeah. And overall, for, like, game health and community I don't think that's the right step mm. and I think now you look at something like well let's like looking specifically at the heavy slot you've got swords you've got like rocket launches you've got like the war path which is like everyone says this is better on axis than anything else you know what I mean like you've got all these different options that you could use in that heavy slot whereas before it was just 
ball of horn and that was it you know what i mean so i feel like getting any weapon to the point where it is a must-have in a slot and and nothing else i think would be pretty bad um i do feel like there needs to be other ways to bring that feeling of power and and rarity to a weapon though i don't know yeah. what the answer to that is though like but absolutely it should feel amazing when you have this weapon in your hand it should feel really special it, feel, it should feel like something great but i don't think that should be because it's so much better than everything else you mm. know and i guess that's like i would love to hear the solution to that because i certainly don't have the answer but that's I mean, certainly you could where look my to mind like, goes you could look to like what a warcraft where you have you know you have that upper rarity item i think they were orange in color where you know there are equivalent weapons you can use and they're not necessarily the best but they're just special rare you know you get them and they're like it's like a tier above exotic and you know they they might have a, like a 0.01 percent drop rate and they're not necessarily inherently better than the other weapons but they they look special right there's maybe you know maybe yeah. that's, uh, that's mm. an approach maybe, you, yeah, maybe it's that maybe it's like the the bullets that it fires look different maybe it's the sound that it makes looks different the reload animation is different like maybe it just feels like a fully kitted out version mm. of your favorite weapon do you know what i mean yeah and so of like practically moon with ornaments versus a normal one right or yeah but, yeah, but like one. i'm talking like ornaments like that make it like the touch of malice where the like the hawk moon is like floating and like i don't know like i'm just talking yeah. you know where it really brings it up to that level where this thing looks looks and feels and sounds incredible but mm. it doesn't um change the gameplay experience in a mm. manifest way and pushes people towards that exclusively and pushes people out who aren't lucky enough to get it because i think yeah. that i don't think as much as i love the galahorn it was the best thing ever don't get me wrong i definitely do not want to go back to the no. galahorn days because sure, sure. i think mm. that was not not the way yeah, yeah. what are your thoughts Mike? I think there's a really interesting question here that is not just bound up with exotics and how they should be worked into the economy, but it's also a two-part thing. And one of them is how they interact with legendaries, because mm -hmm. I feel like getting legendaries should not be hard. Maybe getting exotics really should be. Yes. Uh, and the other question that integrally comes with this, and I, I know that you'll have thoughts on this one too, guys, is how they get involved in the Crucible. And the longer that I've been playing Destiny, the more I think to myself that everything in the Crucible should just be straight up normalized, so that yeah. every shotgun is the same, and if you throw on an exotic, it's just a skin. Wow, we've had this conversation quite a few yeah. times, haven't we, Arix? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a damn tough one, but at the end it of the is. day, I'm looking at the Crucible right now, and I'm looking at it all the way back through various eras, and there has always been something that has been exceptionally powerful in certain game modes, right? So take a look at Trials. For years, Truth dominated as one of the heavy exotics that people use for Trials. Take a look back at Year One, and things were even more prevalent because you had Thorn and Hawk mm. Moon, at least if you're on PlayStation, and mm. both of those dominated. The last word has been consistently strong until recently, uh, depending on whether it's been strong to hip fire or fire, you know, aiming down sights, you know, regardless. Mm -hmm. It's always had a place within the meta. And then you take a look at some other weapons, like Icebreaker, which now is really dominant, with things such as, say, the Trespasser, which is not as good as something like, say, the Wormwood, but is still very often picked. Yeah. And even by this point in time, No Land Beyond, which, you know, it may have received a big yeah. nerf recently, but still, I see a lot of people running with that thing, and... Yeah, the point is that exotics really do change up the game of the Crucible quite significantly, and I think mm. it does make it interesting, but I feel as though a competitive experience might be better if it's standardized i'd at least like yeah. to try it and see if it feels better. yeah you know what you know what they should do i mean well you know or one potential solution would be in a, in a similar way to how they have now you you know you have um a certain area where you can kind of go and you can use whatever you want and then if you were to like if you looked at games like halo or you looked at like call of duty and you look at um options where you basically have loadouts right i mean i feel like if you wanted to like really take destiny to like a competitive side you could still have your existing crucible where people can just jump in and use whatever weapons they want and feel awesome about it you know admittedly mm -hmm. maybe in like slightly more normalized format but then for those those people that like are truly trying to trying to make destiny become a, you know a slightly more competitive sweaty um, tryhards yeah well, no, exactly but i think i think it would be nice i think it would be nice to have you know to have that that availability to them and in situations like yeah, that totally. you could have uh, if if you loaded in you know and it was like you had x number of different loadouts and then each of those you have certain weapons that are bound in there maybe you can kind of adjust them to a certain certain degree but it means that every time you pick that weapon you know it's got the same perks it's got the same this that and the other so you're then literally playing in a in an even playing field maybe in those situations you don't have exotics you literally just have like you know you have your stock 
range of assault rifles, maybe like you know, like mm. your fast firing, your slow firing. You have your shotgun. White you, weapons. Yeah, exactly. I mean, essentially right. that, right? Yeah, and if, if you and if you have that, then I feel like you know, it's not gonna t it's not gonna take anything away because the people that still want to have that that fun, just all you know, chaotic um, crucible experience walls can still to the walls experience where it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, 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 you yeah. can you can totally fire wolf pack rounds at a dude with yellow horn, that kind of thing. You can melt a dude with a laser if you want. Yeah, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I because I I kind of feel I totally agree because like in my review of um destiny that i just put up like the point I, we looked looked at halo right because halo mm. back in the day was just the best it was the best you know what i mean and it wasn't just cool it was like so competitive and it's like ranking system was so good it was just great right but it was obviously all normalized in the sense yeah. that everyone had the same shit so i and i would love and this is where we start getting into that wish listing territory but i would love ranked play in destiny yes. oh, please. And, but if yeah. it's yeah. going to happen it has to happen under a normalized model for sure where everyone has the same weapons so in that regard i would totally love like a mayhem style crucible that i do for like legendary marks and other shit just for fun and whatever um and i'd love to have the iron banner as well because i think it's a cool tournament to mm. do but i would love to have a persistent ranked mode that just yes. let me say here is your one here here are the five weapons that you can use in this place and then it's all about skill baby you know like yeah. that would be mm. amazing you know that's 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 my ultimate number one wish list item yeah. for destiny 2 i mean, that could, I mean that could, you know that could work really well and they could even work that into a sort of seasons format where like season one they have like oh, yeah. a specific number of loadouts right and then the next season they they mix it up so they, you know they're still normalized weapons but maybe it's like season two you have diff like a different set of auto rifles like it's the it's the slow firing season or you know the different like types of snipers and stuff so it could be an interesting yeah definitely definitely could be a, a super interesting uh interesting thing to consider and, and dude even with that like cut this i'm gonna sound like i'm totally walking in circles and uh making a big u-turn here but even if you do have like that format where you do have loadouts mm. maybe there is still a way you can work exotics into that right so maybe yeah. each loadout has is like instead of just being white weapons as legendary uh, but then you also have your one exotic per thing. So yeah. the hand cannon loadout will always have Hawk Moon, for example. And that but means if Hawk it's... Moon is better than every other weapon. <laughs> but you see, this is the <laughs> point, right? Because it slowly starts to shift things as you go forward. So it, it, like, it really brings me back to things like LoL and StarCraft, where certain heroes and therefore certain abilities become really powerful. You know, mm. any sort of MOBA. And that's one of those interesting moments where you see how things shifted up and maybe you just want to create an interesting experience each time. I know that's not going to yeah. satisfy anybody who's a PvPer, who's like super hardcore, but mm -hmm. that's just my thoughts. I mean, yeah. I'll also say this, dude. When it comes to exotics in just endgame, I'm not at all... In fact, I brought this up to Deej previously in one of the interviews I did with him back when Rise of Iron was launching and I asked, like, Three of Coins culture has destroyed the rarity of exotics. Will you be getting rid of Three of Coins? And his words verbatim were, I am not going to stop anybody from getting their exotics and i'm not going to make that any harder on them yeah yeah uh, i reckon there's no way they would backtrack on that no, no, no way. way like they they no know way. that i think that bungie is very much aware of how hard it was to get loot back in yep. the days of vanilla having said all that i feel as though there's a really important distinction they need to make and again this is why i say what i said at the beginning legendaries should be relatively speaking you know, you should need to work for them, but they should be attainable yeah. within reasonable circumstances, and you should be able to build up your gear score, or sort of light, or whatever you're going to call it in Destiny 2, with that, and with only legendaries, you should still be able to get to max level. Mm. However, exotics should still retain their place, where they can be in a competitive state where they're slightly better than legendaries, to the point where you can only use one of them, but they're still really rare. That's, I think, the kind of line that they need to toe with Destiny, where yeah. they say that, you know, exotics are still really good, PvE the, is the place where they're effective and the place where you can start using them. And on top of all of that, they are going to be rare again, but they're only going to be rare because you will actually have legendaries. You know, yes. you're not going to get yeah. the thing of like a green, ang uh, sorry, a green uh, piece of gear decrypting from a legendary engram. You know? No, no, for sure. Why? I love that feature. That was the best. <laughs> yeah, it's it's everyone love that guys. feature. Come on, man. Bring it back. Oh, dear. No, that's fair 12 engrams decrypting yeah. at legendary level gave me eight blues and four <laughs> greens. Right. And that's fine. Those I love the days, that, man. Guys. Brilliant, Same brilliant. Exactly. And just to be clear to everyone like, listening to the comments, this isn't us trying to say, like, oh, everything should be so hard, you must grind for a thousand hours to get it. It's like, that's not that at all. I think that's Yeah, think you there's elitist. A, yeah, there's definitely you, a clear you line. You know, lifer. <laughs> there's definitely a clear line between, like, things feeling special and things still being attainable. But um, yeah. anyway, moving on from there, there's a couple more things, but I'm going to work them into the Destiny 2 part of it, because that's obviously what we really want to talk about. So before we actually move on to talk about Destiny 2, I want to 
pose a question to you two. Um, actually, a question that DJ asked me when I like, last time I had a chance to, to meet him. Assuming for a second that you guys are running a game store and you are setting up the shelves, and on the left shelf you have World of Warcraft, and on the right shelf you have Call of Duty, there is no in between shelf. Currently, as it exists right now, where do you place Destiny? By far, let you leave with this one. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Mm. Um, hmm. I've got my answer for this already, but I'll discuss that after. Now, if if you're okay, so here's the thing, right? I feel as though if uh, I played it for ten hours and I had my first impressions of it, I very squarely put it on the right-hand shelf with Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Having said that, having played it for longer than that, and having played two and a half thousand hours worth of this <laughs> game over three years. I would put it probably more on the left-hand shelf. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, it is somewhere in between the two, and this yeah. is why this question becomes so interesting. <laughs> but I feel as though Bungie is also very afraid of putting it on the left-hand shelf. Right? Yes. And this, like this, I think, is a problem that they need to not do, uh, not play into, rather. So, the big problem with vanilla, what was it, guys? Plain and simple, aside from the loot. The, well, it was, you had to grind forever to get anything, right? Aside, aside from the loot, aside from the loot. Oh, aside from the loot. Um, um, it's the story, right? The story, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, there was yeah. practically speaking, no story. I feel as though, because Bungie constantly talks about how Destiny is an action game, they're afraid of letting story elements and lore and maybe things that do put it closer towards an MMORPG really shine forward. And I think that is a huge missed opportunity. It's probably yes. one of the biggest mistakes if that's their mentality, because the MMOR MMORPG elements to Destiny can work really well. It's part of the game that I really love, but also it's something that saves them from those awful reviews, right? If they doubled down on the story front and had released vanilla with a really good story, a lot of the loot issues might have been forgiven, and yeah. it might have been, you know, one of those things where, okay, sure, we just need to work on this over time. But Destiny's bad story very firmly put it in Polygon's 6 out of 10 list. You know? Yes. It, it could have yeah. been totally disagree been... with everything really? you just said, Bife. Totally disagree with everything oh. you just said. I really, like, story is like not what I, I story is completely separate from the concept of an mmo like completely different the concept of the of an mmo emerges after the story is complete and then after that it's like the grinding systems and like the persistent world that asks you to come back to it and continue to like grind in it for progress that is what defines an mmo like so i feel like when you say they need to invest in that mmo side more deeply I feel like I would be very cautious with that because I think they they struck such a perfect balance this time around between where they were actively beating off suggestions with a stick that this was an MMO because otherwise people just wouldn't have looked at it. Do you know what I mean? Like there are so many people and I think at, we as like hardcore PC slash console, like hardcore gamers or whatever with a disposition towards a loot focus RPG are, all, are, are like, yeah, cool, MMO, that's great. But so many people, you talk to them and they're like, I will never play an MMO they're the worst blah 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 and if you start if Destiny starts getting this rep as an MMO I reckon it would just really hurt it big time so they talk about mm. the questification of, of um, Destiny when they talk about like Taken King for example when they talked about their evolution uh, they don't necessarily talk about it becoming more MMO like like you'll almost never hear Bungie use those words of like MMO because I, I really think that they were smart enough to realize that it would just it just wouldn't fly with the with the the sort of balance they're trying to strike. Mm, now you see, that's my con that's my controversial oh, disagreement no. quite, moment. Quite, quite the contrary, so. but it brings up an interesting point that the, even the term MMO means different things to different people, right? Yeah. So when I talk about, Absolutely. Um, I I haven't played a ton of WoW, uh, but like let's say I bring up one of the uh, let's say I bring up the final raid in uh, Wrath, you know, let, let, mm. in just the Wrath era, right? When I when I bring that up to you, what what do you think of in terms of the context for it? You know, when the you exploiting it the first time. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, no, that uh. no, like totally. I agree. Like, there's huge amounts of context for the idea that you're finally up against Arthas. That's the point you were making, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Totally. Totally. And, and that, like, yeah, there's the there's huge gravitas to that mm -hmm. moment, right? Huge gravitas. But the best WoW encounters that I ever had were for enemies that I had no idea what they were, and they had no lore behind them whatsoever. They were just these random bosses. But the boss were so unbelievably incredibly perfectly designed 
and like the experiences that I went through with my guildmates to break them that was everything to me so I guess it take it's obviously different people love different things I played with mm. people who love the law I, I I like law but it's not a huge thing for me I played with people who love achievement hunting and they just want to get every single achievement I guess the thing about an MMO is it's naturally broad enough where it can welcome lots of different types of players mm. um, but I think that the overarching kind of um, component or, or, or draw card to what we t- traditionally call an MMO is the idea that of repetition you know it's like doing it again and again um and again i think that's what this this is part of the point right like two totally different perspectives when i double down on the idea of a mmo i'm literally doubling down on the idea of when you're facing arthas this is a story that has been built up since warcraft 3 and Mm. all the stuff between arthas and jaina starts to get resolved and everything moving forward with that story of you know who is going to take over as the new lich king that kind of stuff that's what Mm. i think of when i think mmo but again that's a very different perspective from what you think of so maybe the way of me clarifying this better is simply saying that with destiny 2 i want them to really double down on the story and not be afraid of saying that destiny is an action game but it's an action game with a kick-ass story and one that that's you true. can really deeply yeah. immerse yourself into. Yeah, I totally agree I, with that. Like, that's my inner fear, is that they mm. will say that it's an action game and they will tailor only to action game fans and then they will forget about the story in the process, right? Mm. And, you know, I feel as though that's... Don't get me wrong, there could be a ton of reasons why Vanilla was as bad as it was in story terms, but I feel as though there was this kind of leftover mentality just with even the way they marketed it, you know? Like, the story was relegated to Bungie.net and that's really... That troubles me to this day. It's still yeah. something that irks me. Um, I'm not okay with them not allowing more of the story into the games. This is why Rise of Iron was such an important expansion for me in terms of like monitoring Bungie's progress. Because it was like, how much of this lore are you putting front and center? A relatively decent sized chunk of it. Okay, this is a step forward. It's not the biggest uh, one you could have made, but it's still a step forward. Yeah, I would be staggered if they didn't put story front and center this time around. Like staggered, oh, yeah. you know. It's like mm-hmm. the number one thing they realized they got wrong. I reckon there are like four hundred people working at Bungie whose job it is to like look over the guy writing the story, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. like yeah. just to make sure it's good, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, totally, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're kind of just sort of going back to that question originally. Yeah, I like I when when Deej originally asked me that question, I kind of I initially said because I actually. It's a very interesting question to kind of pose to someone that plays both Destiny and The Division. Because when you compare those two side by side, I definitely would have pushed Division a lot more to the WoW side. And then at the moment, because while there's a lot of like MMO light aspects, there's obviously the repetition, the grind and stuff in Destiny. I feel like there's not enough, in my opinion, there's not enough RPG for me to have warranted putting on the left shelf. Which is why I kind of, I had placed it at the time. Or well, my answer to the question was that I put it more towards the Call of Duty side. However, my mm. hopes for Destiny 2 are definitely more towards the left shelf. Like, I mean, I appreciate that, you know, Activision and Bungie obviously are trying to sort of cater to it's it's an interesting game, you know, they they have. They're trying to they're trying to sort of cater to as many people as possible. And, you know, I think Dato said it might many times before, like when whenever we have these raid encounters and they're, you know, they they provide a challenge, but fundamentally they're not the challenge of the same kind of caliber of World of Warcraft encounters. And as such, you know, I don't I don't think we're ever gonna I don't think Destiny's ever gonna become sort of the to skill to uh, to skill point, like the, the MMO that I want it to be, but I would mm. like it if they kind of went more towards that point. There are definitely aspects of an MMO that you can take and that you can use um, that don't necessarily have to make it suddenly turn Destiny into a ultra hardcore grindy. You have to give away your mm. life game to it. But there are definitely some really uh, really interesting things. But let me let me move that on into kind of like the next part. Um, moving into obviously you know trailer for Destiny Two. We're off to a rather ominous start. Um, Haven't seen it by the way, but anyway, uh, continue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Oh, well. I'm, Shock no, horror. Just have, haven't gotten around to it. There will be a ton of loot. <laughs> <laughs> haven't, got, yeah, haven't gotten around to it. To it's know. on my to-do list. One of the main, um, one of the main uh, kind of discussion points initially was because uh, I, I appreciate there's a very clear divide about this. I'm, I'm very kind of pro this. But what are your, uh, what are your stances on this whole fresh start, clean slate, everything you've worked for and earned up until this point is uh, kaput? Bye. What about you? What do you, what do you, what do you sit on this? You know that I'm very biased towards story reasons, and I think as long as you provide a good canon reason for it, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, even when you look at the loot grind of Destiny, the way that the Crucible was balanced in Destiny, and even just the perceptions of Destiny from the outside, I think that this was a really smart move. Yeah. It means that you have the ability to take the Crucible and say, okay, any previous balance issues we had, we've used Destiny 1 not just as its own experience, but also we've taken a look at what we've learned from there and we can use something here that we've 
you know, experiment yeah. with to build something new. You take a look at everything with regards to the loot grind, which may have been disrespectful at first, and you have the ability with the fresh slate to say, hey, look, it's not Destiny 1's loot, it's the Destiny 2 loot, which will be way more rewarding. Mm. And that's, you know, aside from anything else, the uh, the story context for it, especially seeing as on the invites it even says a world without light, that kind of thing. Yeah. It gives you this really compelling reason to want to dive back into the universe, you know? Yes. For Destiny players who have been jumping in with this and know everything uh, about what we've done, you know? They, they've they played through Rise of Iron and Taken King and Dark Below and House of Wolves and Vanilla and the April Update and the Dawning and the Age of Triumph and everything that's ever been offered in Destiny. This for them is personal, you know? The, yeah. Removing the loot and giving you guys a very clear person that you can hate for that it's an ingenious idea in terms of how you get your player base around to accepting a fresh start. There's a reason why hashtag fuck Gary is an autocomplete <laughs> when you go and type it into Twitter. You know, Love it's, it. It, it's, it's a very okay. important point to make on this. Yes. And also, it provides this really strong basis for them to build a villain from the ground up. If mm. you can go ahead and not only show that he's decimated us in terms of our powers, and not only show that he's destroyed all our loot and given us this fresh start as a result, if you can also show that they are genuinely menacing and are worthy of being called a really strong antagonist, then all of a sudden, that fresh start is an integral part of selling Destiny 2's story. And mm -hmm. I think that if this all comes together and works, it's genius. If yes. it doesn't, still a good move. Yeah, I Primarily think. Primarily yeah. because of everything that happened with Destiny 1 and removing sure. stigma. Yeah, but yeah, definitely, definitely. Good what idea. You, what about you, Scott? I think the only thing I'll say is I'm really surprised by how cool the community is with it because yeah. like I just remember seeing all these posts that were like if Bungie ever removes my stuff I'm quitting the game you know it's like <laughs> I've played 3,000 hours but I will quit if they I take mean, there my have loot been you know like that. <laughs> oh there have been but like they've just been mm. laughed off do you know yeah, what I mean yeah, and I'm yeah. not disrespecting mm. anyone watching this video who feels no, that sure. way I hope you know that but what I'm saying is that like because I get you you worked hard for your loot and I, I fully respect that but um, but I just think in aggregate the community's been like yeah okay cool that sounds yeah. fine what's, what's next mm -hmm. you know and that's really surprised yeah. me because I really expected a lot more, uh, a lot more anger, a lot more like, oh my God, this is not happening kind of thing. But everyone mm. just kind of took it on the chin and rolled with it, you know? So yeah. I think that's a good thing because I do think that they see the sense of it. Like, I think I, I ultimately, it just makes a lot of sense, you know? Yeah. I think it's also like a learning process for these kind of games. I mean, it's something we saw um, a lot more at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You know, when, when you have this, this kind of this new sort of genre, we have this, I, I, you know, I, I typically call it MMO Light. It's probably got a better name for it yeah. but you know the i think the, you know you, you think back to I know say exactly when, what you're about to say by the way i know exactly yeah. what you're about to say you think back Go to on, say it you think back to year one when you got your fate bringer and then dark below came out and they were like all that gear is useless and everyone's like what i worked hard for yeah. that right but like, i think no, because I, I think i think because i go back Go Sorry, on. I interrupted you. Go, I interrupted you. Go on, go on. Go no, on. I was going to say, I think, I think, because I think for a lot of people, this is their first. Like for anyone that didn't play World of Warcraft and when they first kind of jumped into yeah. Destiny, this was their first sort of like dipping their toe into what an MMO could be like. And for as you know, as World of Warcraft players, I'm used to like I complete my raid, I get my raid gear. Then other the next season comes out, all my stuff is rubbish. The new like green gear I'm getting is far better than my hours and hours of grinded raid gear. Um, I'm used to this concept. I think for a lot of people they weren't. And I think a lot of people, you know, they're obviously yeah. like, I work for something, therefore I should be able to keep it forever. It's like, yeah, it's not really how this game works. But I think to your point, yeah, people being cool about it, they're probably, you know, the more they play Destiny, the more they play these kinds of games, they realize that, you know, stuff you earn isn't forever. And they're kind of pr probably becoming a lot more acceptant to it. Mm -hmm. totally. But dude, I mean, this is why the, this is skill. This is why you should watch the Destiny 2 trailer because <laughs> I should, I really, like, ha it, I really should watch that. It's so perfectly constructed, right? Because what they do is they build the reason for it getting removed. They build the villain. They build this idea of story. But you know what the most ingenious line of that trailer is? It's not anything to do with Gary. like Gaul or Gary or Cade, <laughs> you know, being a little bit silly. It's Cade's final line where he says, there will be a ton yeah. of loot. And you know why? Because that immediately drives home not only the fact that that's hilarious, but also that's integrally part of the Destiny experience, you know? It's a way of saying, you may have lost your loot, but like, dude, do you know how much loot there's going to be in Destiny 2? Oh yeah. my god, you need to play this regardless because there will be so much freaking loot. You know, that mm, yeah, that's yeah. the kind of thing that will hook people now in this community. And mm. it, it it's perfectly structured now to have players accept that as a reality. Mm. I, I, I feel like, again, like... Bungie really needed to sell this perfectly, and yeah. they've done a damn good job of it so far. Could have easily been better from the outset, because I know that when people heard, like, we aren't getting our new stuff, there was 
you know, there, there's riots in the streets, so to speak, but mm. they've really crafted a message that allows players to sort of get around to that. And I think that's a very skillful thing of them to do. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, true. Well, so moving on from there, there's something else I want to kind of talk about that um, is actually quite interesting. Obviously, you know, the destruction of the tower. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about this for one of my, one main reason. I mean, I think one of the one of the common um, complaints about Destiny in Year One is that like you have these, you have this kind of disjointed universe where you know you jump from loading screen to ship to planet, and you know you jump in and out. But like one of the things that I enjoy the most about MMOs, and this isn't even a like really kind of hardcore grindy thing, it's just the 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 feeling of exploration in these kind of games where you know you you don't. In a lot of these sort of MMOs, while there are while there are big cities, you don't typically have one solitary place that you call home. There are just so many different outposts, so many places to discover, so many things to kind of roam around. And I think something that I'm super excited about with Destiny 2 is the notion that if the tower, which has for a long time been our central location, a place for us to call home, doesn't exist, then it really kind of, you know, if, if you look back to, I think it was one of the investor calls at the end of last year, there was, you know, sort of vague speak about um, outposts and, you know, like more sort of social spaces, so to speak. So the the note yeah if, if the tower doesn't exist or like you know a, a place for us to call home then it really excites me about for about you know the the kind of possibilities for the world that we're going to be exploring you know hopefully that it will become a lot more expansive a lot more because one of the things I remember back to back to like I don't know if you guys you probably did the same thing like when the when the alpha came out I explored every inch of the cosmodrome oh, that I could right because yeah, and and that, and that felt exciting right but then when the game came out. I never had that urge to do the same on Venus or on Mars because I, I knew that there wasn't actually anything there. So, mm. um, yeah, I mean, from you know, from a, from a kind of destruction point of view and like an envi- you know, a place to explore point of view. Um, I mean, what are you guys hoping to you know to sort of like see from that? Skill up. I, yeah, I, yeah, I personally, I would love to see. Obviously, there's going to be some kind of base camp for us or something. Yeah. There's going to be some new tower, right? But I would really love to see that tower like move over time because obviously yeah. there's going to be expansions and I'd really love to see like this expansion it's here and then we've made inroads against the cabal and, and we're doing and like we're here now and we've got a new camp set up and it's like and you get closer and closer and I'd love it if like the final expansion for Destiny 2 is like we retake the tower you know what I mean that becomes mm. our home again like I don't know that's just kind of I, I just feel like I mean, I spent so much time in the tower over the last three years, and obviously there was the reef for a time where we could chill, and obviously there's like um, fell into peak now. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's still the tower. Like that's yeah. where we go most of the time. And I would just really like to see new places open up that become the place that we go to really regularly. Because I don't know, I just like that world building component that we are moving forward with the story. Like our our home is being uh, moved closer towards where it should be once again. If we're making real progress. In in the in the overall like the arc of the story of destiny 2 you know yeah um but um but yeah i don't really know what it means for um like broader exploration so i don't know Bife, what are you thinking so i'm on the note of like homesteads so to speak yes there should mm. absolutely be like more places throughout the wild that we can sit down and you know for a moment rest and sort our gear and clear our vault and whatnot but what i really want to see is our ships become yeah hooked, yeah true so right? true because ships Warframe. have been nothing but an aesthetic thing and skill you literally took the words out of my mouth warframe <laughs> yeah. does it perfectly yeah right? it does it, i am not a fan of that game even though it's become better with its microtransactions I, I played it for a time and then i just sort of dropped it because i just do not feel a passion for that game but what they do amazingly is they give you a ship where it really does feel like you can interact and it has purpose to it yes i want yeah, to see true. ships be your social space i want to see you have the ability to you know have dialogue with your ghost inside your ship i want to have mm. the ability to consult your vault inside your ship or what you know maybe it's just I, your ship's stores and everything yeah i agree with you in part because I, I i really think like the normandy with mass effect warframe ship even the ship in um star wars um the old republic if anyone's played that mm, before the oh my right? God, yes. yeah yeah those were like great ships and having a ship is a really cool thing by the way like especially like assassin's creed black flag when you got your ship and you were out in the seas and like the pirate shanties were going ship. Mm-hmm. You hate that ship? What? What? <laughs> what? 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 Okay, this is now an Assassin's Creed podcast, everyone. We're changing the topic. We're only talking about Assassin's Creed Black Flag now. I play anyway. Assassin's Creed to be an assassin, not a pirate. <laughs> anyway, oh, moving on. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> um, but, but having a ship is like, it's such a thing. You know, it's just a great feeling of like, yeah. you own you your territory. You own, this is your place in the world. It and you can take it wherever you want. Yeah, it right. really does. 
But at the same time, I don't want it to be the only social hub that we have because no. I really want there to be a place where I drop down on the ground and there are the NPCs there. There are other guardians that I bump into, you know, like I'd really love it if the best adventures, the best stuff at the times that I had in the tower were kicking the ball around, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I really wish there were more opportunities to interact with other guardians in the tower yeah. or whatever space. Like, that's just cool. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just great when you can have a funny moment with someone while you're sitting around waiting to go to orbit because the fire team leader is busy doing something else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I just, I think absolutely love the ship idea. It would be amazing. But I really think they just also need an awesome capital as well. Mm. Yeah. No. I think I think my... um. Like the dream scenario mixing two of those is to have like an Ebon Hawk and like a space station type thing or just a larger ship, right? So yeah. the Ebon Hawk is your, or whatever you want to call it, your personal ship, your fighter, uh, or maybe it's something slightly larger than that for the purposes of what I'm about to talk about, is your narrative hub. You know, you can talk to characters there. You, you, maybe you collect heroes throughout your adventures in Destiny, and you can sit down and chat with Saint-14 or, you know, the last remnants of Toland that just whispers to you from a little bit of a hive husk or whatever. You know, I, I want to have that as a narrative base and a place where you can consult your vault and everything, but I also want that central space station where you can sit down with Guardians yeah. and play cards, you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. sit down yeah, and sure, bet on Games, Sparrow Races yes, or something. Like, completely. Just little mini How? things. You know, How like good that is can. reminiscent of, of of kicking the ball around, and maybe it's something totally. that pulls away. But dude, it's, it's imagine one if you of those gamble strange you coins, expand the universe. Yes, yes. To no, imagine yeah. if you could play like triple triad from Final Fantasy VIII or Gwent from The Witcher Three in the tower with <laughs> oh. other people, four strange coins. Holy shit, that is the end game right there. <laughs> okay. like, yeah. just like, they just oh, dust well, their I hands and be like, guys, we've done it. It's finished. Wait, yo, the game you, is ready. Ship it right horn? now. Let's bet the yellow one for, for your like big Dude, ship. Do you have, do you have any amazing. idea how much Pazark I played in Kota when I was there we just go. having See? spare time? When I was like, I want to beat all of these motherfuckers right. in here because That's these the guys don't go. know how to play Pazark like I do. So if Bungie steal our idea, we should get paid for that. We should get yeah. it. <laughs> voice That's, That's right. <laughs> so one, uh, one, one major thing I want to speak about and then we'll, uh, we'll lead on to kind of the, the wrapping up side of things. So the last thing, obviously, um, with our abilities gone or, you know, suppressed however you want to kind of call it the, the, the start of thing um leads are leads to a rather interesting prospect of you know what how how is it gonna you know how's it gonna pan out how are we gonna discover these new abilities how are things gonna work you know obviously without um without the life and the traveler and whatnot obviously i'll, I'll throw it to you wife because there'll be some rather interesting law side like some things for this but the um thing that i like something that I, I think would be rather interesting like what do you guys think of you look back at like destiny one now we have you know we have our, our very three our, our three clear elemental subclasses you know we have void you have arc you have solar right and you know you switch between them what would you think to if, imagine if like Destiny Two um, changed the approach and you had a much more sort of MMO esque skill tree that you spec down, and that allowed you to then like basically dip into different trees to then kind of truly create? Because one of the things that I think I, I I really wish Destiny had like this is a personal thing obviously, but I feel like with the with the subclass trees you have right now, yes, there are a few there are a few nodes you can change. You can change a grenade. You can change the type of jump, and there's a few different things you can tweak here and there. Um, but largely they don't i mean there's there's a few changes but largely they don't drastically change from spec to spec whereas you look at something like world of warcraft you have you could have like the same character with three drastically different specs you'll play a completely different way and obviously you know you could argue that well those specs are you know void solar and arc but i would love to sort of like see an idea where you know these they almost kind of come together and then you you can you can kind of get a lot more customization in your abilities and, you know the way you build things um and also to that point of obviously um light and dark i feel like it would be really cool to sort of explore a star wars-esque approach to this where given that we've lost our abilities and we have to you know we have to kind of do whatever we can to try and get new abilities what do you guys think of the idea of dipping both into light and dark so i'll throw to you first by because i'm sure there are many uh, lore implications for this but uh thoughts so here <laughs> the interesting question um is this possible yes it, it, there's there's already prime examples in the lore of this happening you know take a look mm -hmm. at dreadkin yore take a look at the shadows of yore which is a more contemporary example of guardians following in his footsteps take a look at the ahamkara you guys yep. ever used a knuckles of ao yep 
Yeah, so hey that is, like, the Armkara are quite literally called Wish Dragons. They grant you power and they grant you boons, but they have to be repaid in time. Yes. Take a look at Ephrodite, who says that there are other ways to siphon your light. Take a look at the three new subclasses you got in the Taken King, which are not subclasses that are traditionally derived, uh, take their light and that are derived from the Traveler. The mm. Hammer of Sol is quite literally forged from the light of Sol's fire, from the star of our solar system. Yeah. The Storm Trance is quite literally using the arc light of a storm that runs through all of life and constantly concentrating it and you are a conduit for that you you know flesh yourself out through that storm and it just runs through you and as a result zaps a bunch of dudes night stalkers quite literally pull their power directly from the void and it's not something inspired by the traveler hmm. so are there ways of getting powers in terms of destiny's lore and canon without having them you know uh, directly from the traveler yeah it, there, there are ways of getting them but at the same time some of them are really risky. I mean, yeah. take a look again. Dreadgen Yore, Darkness, Weapons of Sorrow, all the stuff to do with the Hive. Can we wield that? Yes. Is it something that still aligns as our powers with a Guardian of the Light? Maybe not. Mm. Yeah, very scary questions. It's totally possible. Whether it's going to happen or not is another question altogether. Yeah, I, I, I'm. There's so many different possibilities for how this one could go, but I kind of want to just throw it to Skill to see what he thinks, because I could probably would be better answering if I just like bounce off of that. To be honest, mm -hmm. I um yeah. Well, I mean, I sort of gravitate more towards the part of your question about like the depths of skill trees and character customization. Yeah. Um and yeah, for me, I would be so against that. Really? Um, because yeah, yeah, because like I really think the heart and soul of Destiny's DNA is the idea that you um, become more powerful by very small percentages. And really, the, the strength of your combat, combat prowess comes from knowing how to shoot a gun really well, you know, and knowing how to move well, and knowing how to position well. It's like that gunplay component is, I think, what makes Destiny, like, magnificent. Whereas I think that if I just knew the right build where I could stand out in a group of enemies and just tank shit forever because I specced that way, I would just feel like that was way less, you know, satisfying. If I feel like I could build a glass cannon hunter build where I just sit back with a sniper rifle and I can like one shot rockets McDickface with like a LDR, <laughs> then like I just feel like that would not be destiny for me, you know? Like I just, yeah. I love the fact that we are all... The, 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 the weapons that you get make you a few percentage points more powerful. Your armor makes you a few percentage points more powerful. Same with your skills, you know, a few percentage points here and there. And it all adds up to like, I reckon it's like a 15% delta all in, you know? It's not like other games that I've played, like for example, The Division, where your power is, is like is like 95% determined by the equipment that you're wearing and the spec that you've got and this and that. Like, it's just totally different, you know? And, and that's why it can be so disempowering to play the division if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Because if you've made the wrong choice in that moment, you're dead, you know? Whereas with Destiny, there is no wrong choice. You're always going to be fine so long as you're a skilled player, you know? Mm. Um, yeah. And I just feel like holding on to that sense sort of... Um, homogenization uh, homogeneity of um their class design i just feel is so important so I, I really hope they do lots of new stuff i'd love to see a new subclass i'd love to see more than one new subclass like they could go all sorts of directions with it but i i really feel that that clarity and that streamlining of that 15% um, delta is just i think so 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 important Fair. so i mean <laughs> I, I disagree with you on, on the idea that it's a 15% delta, I think it's more, but purely when it comes to game modes with the right modifiers or certain raid encounters, right? Like, on oh, Axis, that's true, for sure, my, for sure. On Axis, for example, I think it's closer to like 30%, but when it comes hmm. to all the crazy modifiers on Nightfalls and whatnot, like, take for example Airborne, Specialist, Arcburn, Nightfall, where none of the enemies are dealing Arc, and you have 4th Horseman. And Peregrine you know, Greaves. And, and Peregrine Greaves, or anything, you sure. know, Fist of Havoc or something. Point is, sure. like, under the right conditions, the delta can be bigger, and I think I think that's where Destiny's like skills can really sort of come in there, and you know the depth that we have is just right. So I think the prime example of this as well, dude, is take a look at how exotics factor into this, and I think maybe a better example is Solar Burn with Celestial Nighthawk, and yeah. with mm. all the perks on Golden Gun that now increase its damage. You know, with that you can potentially like three shot a boss or something. And that's really damn cool to have pieces of kit that enable you to do that in certain special conditions. Now, I think what you're imagine about... a game. Yeah, but imagine a game built around that, though. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, though, because it's mm. only a few select pieces of gear that allow you to do that, and I completely agree with the idea of the rest of everything being built around this homogeneity that every class gets. You know, like, mm. that works. It is, fundamentally, you're correct when saying that that's something going on there which does function, especially on the PvP side of things, but that's a whole other bag of worms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having, you know, having said all of that, I feel like having those few moments where you can break it and you can just say, hey, here's a oh, really... 100%. Like, you know, here's a really yeah. interesting thing you can do with a certain class. Yeah, that works Completely. out. I, I, like, Completely agree. I think Shade Step or Blink are really good examples of this, you know? Like, Mobility Powers in particular. It breaks everything in comparison to what other classes get, but it's a really cool skill that you have to spec into, and you get that because other classes get things that might be comparable, you know? Yeah. A Hunter's Shade Step is comparable to a Titan's Shoulder Charge, or maybe just a Warlock's... Warlocks have really bad jump. Uh, war <laughs> Blink, Blink, for example, Blink. even though it's been or nerfed, Twilight, you know. or Twilight Garrison, or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. 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 Destiny is good because it builds from that level of similarity between the classes, but then it gives each one of them like special, unique little perks. And I feel like if they build that into their upcoming power structures and you know uh, skill trees, that works really nicely. Do what mm. Destiny One did basically, but maybe bump that up just a little bit more, assuming that you can keep it balanced in PvP. Which is a mm. big assumption, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, of course. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, interesting. Right, so as a, as a rounding out point, uh, obviously the uh, the gameplay reveal is, 80, well, at the time of recording the video, 18 days away. Either way, it's near. It's very close. Mm. Um, so as a wrap-up point for both of you, what uh, as two things. One, if you have anything, any one thing in Destiny 2, um, what would you what would you like? And two, what are you hoping to see most of the gameplay reveal? Because I, I imagine I'm going to kind of, I'm, I'm going to, I've kind of made this sort of like, guess that we're probably going to get a build that's probably quite similar to what people are playing the beta maybe what they'll show at E3 yeah. so I would imagine it'll probably be a slice from near the beginning of the game obviously not the beginning of the game to avoid spoilers not too far in so as to give away progression hints so I imagine it's going to be quite early on um, but enough to kind of give us a taste but either way yeah so start it so so rounding up points what do you want like one thing you can have in Destiny 2 and what are you hoping to see most at the uh, game to reveal when you guys go hands on so uh, skill up I'll let you start with that one yeah, well, as I said uh, earlier, I, I really feel like the core of Destiny on the PvE side is in a really great place. Like, I want more stuff. I want some... St I don't even know what I want, to be honest with you, on the PvE side. Like, I just want some more different stuff. And I, just don't ask me what that is. But, I mean, I trust Bungie to give me some new interesting stuff. But it's all built around the existing core, which is like, go out and explore the world, kill some stuff, collect some loot, do some raids, do some other activities that are fun and interesting and continue on you know like I, if, if they only change that that component of it by a small amount i actually would be fairly okay with that because yeah. i don't know i'm pretty conditioned to just want more of the same the kind of games that i've played when i've decided i like them i'm like yep cool I'm li i like that forever now and i just want more yeah. of that you know um but, but on the pve side uh, the pvp side completely different you know like if the one thing that i want is that ranked mode i just want right, to yes. be able to throw myself into a truly balanced truly competitive pvp experience in destiny i want ladders you know i want i want ranked um modes i just i just want that so badly that would just be incredible to me that would round out the experience and it would also i think grow the community in such an interesting way because mm. we um you know, a lot of people ranking or rank systems and ladders are such a massive driver of retention for first person shooter communities. You know, competitiveness is a massive driver. And I just think yeah. that having that in the mix is just going to keep so many more people engaged and really pushing the frontiers of how to play this game well and how to build well if that's a part of what the you know competitive experience is or you know the esports scene that might emerge from that i would love to see that happen you know just so many so many things open up when you bring some competitiveness to an experience um and that for me is is unquestionably the number one perfect what about you both so what do i want to see in the reveal and what do i want to see in destiny 2 right mm. yep Space dragons and more <laughs> space dragons. Nice, that's, nice. That's, uh, what if they're robots? Oh, oh, oh. Do they need to be organic space dragons or can they be robot space dragons? That's an interesting... They could be ro robot space dragons. Uh, might be interesting. See. But no, uh, to, be, to be brutally honest, uh, I want to see... In the reveal, I want to see the reason why we've lost our powers. Like, the very specific reason. Because, you know, you can guess that... We know Gary's taken them, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we want to see the exact reason how and why Gaul has done this. And... Mm -hmm the process behind it. That's my yeah. kind of law itch. As for Destiny 2 generally, and what I want to see in the future, 
I want to see a story that fully embraces the best parts of Destiny's lore, and I think mm -hmm. that you know it sounds like the most obvious answer I could give. But no, no, but that's take a look at the take a look at the blurb on the box already, right? It talks about how we need to reunite humanity's lost heroes in order to take on Gaul. Yeah, that in itself may have some people being like, okay, so whatever. But for me, that is so exciting. That has that me cool. thinking of Avengers and Mass Effect Two. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there are characters out there in the universe that are epic which i really want to see brought into the story right yeah like imagine if we just go after three characters saint 14 famous titan shin malfur the one who wields the last word and gosh what would be a good warlock i mean i'd say the remnants of toland but that's kind of it's a very tough one to pull him there back are out no of the good Netherlands. warlocks <laughs> you, you shut your dirty mouth, you whore. Let's just, let's just get a sweeper bot instead. It's gonna be way better than a oh, yeah. now. It's gonna be yep. way hunters, better. titans, and sweeper bots. There you go. That's you want sweep, right. You want sweep totally done. Should never have agreed to go on a podcast with two hunters. <laughs> Titan, it's Titan, Titan. Thank you very much. Oh, so a hunter and a titan, even worse. That's Fucking right. <laughs> but no, it's seri yeah. all seriousness. I want to see them pull those great characters from yeah. the story of Destiny that has been fleshed out so well on Bungie.net, but has been left on Bungie.net. And I want to see them pull that into the game and not just make things where they have good character development and are relatable to new players, but also I want to see them draw on that lore from yeah. the game. You know, I want to see Shin make references to little notes and lines that are said back in the grimoire cards you know i want to mm -hmm. see a reference where maybe he walks back to the last city he sees that gaul and the cabal have butchered a few of the civilians who are trying to flee and he just looks over it and set, makes a reference to one of those cards like say too many dead kids once again you know that's <laughs> yeah. like strong referential material that pulls okay. from destiny's core that's what i want to see i want to see something where they embrace the story with two hands and yeah never fair let enough. it go fair fair all right, exciting. Well, yeah, and for me, like, I'm definitely hoping more so for like I, as, as someone that you know has played a lot of MMOs and like likes to kind of explore worlds. Especially you know, it's not an MMO, but having played Zelda Breath of the Wild recently and just like literally got lost exploring the world. Like, I just I, I want Destiny to have a huge, expansive open world that I actively want to explore. Like I, you know, I've, I've loved some of Destiny's planets, but like I just I wanna I wanna have that that desire to actually explore them, to go looking in the corner for a random, obscure, hidden treasure, or just just wanting to kind of like go around everywhere. I want I want them to be big enough for me to spend hours exploring them and then hopefully obviously you know discover things along the way quests and whatnot so yeah that's uh that's something i'll definitely like to see but um yeah so for the time being that's uh that's it thank you very much to both of you for chatting it's been a super awesome chat so we are as mentioned very close now to the gameplay reveal we'll all be going hands-on on may 18th so expect uh, coverage on all of our channels so definitely uh, stay tuned of course on the notion of channels you can find links to all of them down below i'm also going to link a couple of videos as well i'm going to link uh Bife's most recent Radagast Law video, that's a very, very good video, definitely check it out. And also Skillops Destiny Review, which is also an amazing video. So check those out and also check out their channels and their Twitters. You can find all the links down below. Thank you to you guys for joining me. Um, we may well have another kind of follow-up conversation at some point following the reveal once everyone's died down and not quite so busy, and then we can talk about our hands-on impressions. But until that point, thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, then a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let us know what you guys are most looking forward to in Destiny 2. Thanks for watching, take it easy, catch you next time. Peace out.